Nord. The monetary union in Europe means the end of national independence and parliamentary democracy. If you didn't know it before, you certainly know it now. Economic policy isn't some side issue that ministers talk about in their free time. It's the central function of a modern government. If your exchange rates, your interest rates, and ultimately your tax rates are set in Frankfurt and in Brussels, then in any meaningful sense you have ceased to be a sovereign nation. I think it was John Maynard Keynes who said, he who controls the currency controls the government. Possibly the only true thing that Keynes ever said. In fact, let me give you a much better source than Keynes. I refer you to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 22. I'm sure you will all remember this part. Jesus is approached and he's asked, is it proper to pay taxes to Rome? You remember what he says? He says, why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. They brought unto him a penny piece. And Jesus said, whose is this image and superscription? They answered him, Caesar's. And Jesus said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Now, before you think I've completely lost my mind, I am not arguing that our Saviour was for or against the euro. That isn't the point of the story. This is the point of the story. When the Gospel writer is looking for the supreme symbol of state sovereignty, he picks the coin as monarchs have done ever since we've had coinage. It's the ultimate mechanism of state power. And when you hand that to EU institutions, your sovereignty goes with it. We've seen it play out in Greece, and we'll see it play out in country after country. You can have the euro, or you can have democracy. You can't have both.